There are three types of temporary tables, derived tables, volatile tables, and global temporary tables. Now, let's talk about each of these three logically so you have a feel for what we're going to discuss. A derived table is built inside parentheses, inside your SQL. It only lives for the life of that query only, and then it is gone. You will use your spool space to create and populate it. Now, a volatile table, you'll create it with an actual create statement, and then you'll populate it with an insert select, and you can query it all session long, hundreds of times. But when you log off, it is gone. It also uses your spool space. Now, temp space is how you populate a global temporary table, but it's a different animal. You create a global temporary table one time, and then you populate it with an insert select statement. You can again query it all session long, but when you log off, the date is gone, but the table structure stays permanently. I'm going to show you many different derived tables and structures of way to create them. And I want you to start with the simplest form. It's time to show your genius. So I've created a query and I'm asking you several questions. Take a look at the blue portion where we create our derived table. What is the name of the derived table? How many columns are in the derived table? What is the name of the derived table columns? Is there more than one row in the derived table? What are the common keys that join the employee and the derived table? And why were the join keys named differently? Good luck. Here's the answer to those questions. I'll bet you nailed those. What is the name of the derived table? Moi, Tara Tom, your favorite teacher. How many columns are in the derived table? A two. What's the name of the derived columns? Depti and AVG Sal. Is there more than one row in the derived table? Yes, because we're grouping by department number. What keys join the tables together. Well, DEPNO and DEPT. Why did we name the keys differently? Because now we don't have to fully qualify with the table names because both of DEPNO and DEPT are in different tables. DEPT's in the derived, DEPNO's in the employee. That's the reason we did it. Great job. In a derived table, you must always name the derived table name. If you call it Terra Tom, it works faster. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. You can name it anything you want. You've got to alias the columns, but you've got a little flexibility there. And I want to really emphasize this point here. Notice my two queries. Let's focus on the top first. We say select Depno as Depti and average salary as ABG Sal, I have specifically named both of those columns right there in that select clause. In the example below, I have said select Depno, comma, average salary as ABG Sal. In that case, I let Depno just alias itself by its current name and I was able to fully name the average salary because it's an aggregate. That's a rule.
So there's some flexibility in aliasing those columns. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Begin your Teradata journey the right way with our Teradata Basics book. Visit coughingdw.com for more information. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.